This is Dwayne N6DMR, and today this video is going to be about how to understand the Anytone firmware update folders uh, on a typical update. And uh, I'm using right now the uh, official D878 firmware version 114. And uh, the reason I'm using it is because it includes almost every update. It includes the 3258 baseband. The only thing that's not in here is an icon update. So this is typically the format that you're going to see um, with the exception of the zip file. That's the original file that I extracted everything from. Uh, this is the typical format you're going to see when you download a firmware update for just about any of the any tone digital uh, mobile radios. So the 868, the 878, and the 578 mobile should be uh, essentially the same format. Um, if it's not, uh, just uh, drop me a note and uh, let me know what's missing or whatever on your where you got your firmware update, and I will take a look at it. Anyway, so the first thing that you'll see if the folders uh, extract properly is a read first update instructions folder. Um, this is really important for new users especially. So I'm going to go ahead and open this folder and take a look at it with you. Okay, so, so in here are a, a number of different instructions and guides. Um, typically they would be in a PDF format. Uh, I do see that there is one change log in a doc format, and then there's also the same firm log in PDF. Um, but uh, irregardless, it's the same information. So <clears throat> I would start with the A read first update instructions folder, and I would look at the change log as the first thing I would do when I get the firmware update. So let's open that up and take a look. Okay, so there's some important information. Um, after you do a firmware uh, update, you need to reset the radio. They call that the MCU reboot or reset. And it tells you how to do that. Uh, it tells you to install the new uh, customer uh, programming software. Uh, and then also it tells you when you install a new CPS or customer program software, you must always, when it's new, a new version, go into the tools, options menus, and set the um, annex functions checkboxes. There's four of them. Typically, GPS and uh, APRS are always checked. If your radio has Bluetooth, you would check that. The 500 hour record check is only for radios that have a 500 hour record module which uh, you have to choose whether you want Bluetooth module or 500 record hour record module. And there's not very many, if any, 500 hour record modules <clears throat> uh, out there. So you can take a look at this real quickly. Um, when you open up the CPS, you go to the top menu, tools, options, and it, options will come up with a menu that says annex functions, options, uh, and you, there'll be check boxes for you to check this. Once you do it the first time, you don't have to do it again until you go to a newer version of the CPS. Okay, then basically they're saying also, uh, hey, save your code plug before you do anything. This is uh, common sense. Um, there's a note here in blue, uh, USB drivers. Um, there is, there's uh, GD virtual drivers, uh, gigabyte devices, virtual drivers that are included in the firmware, but we found that it's recommended not to try to load those drivers unless you're starting to have some problems <clears throat> getting a driver to load. And I would recommend that if you get into that situation before you actually try to load the virtual drivers, contact your dealer for some advice. Um, uh, for sure, uh, before you install any virtual drivers, always do a, a new set point, um, a restore point for your Windows system. Because once you run the Anytone virtual drivers, it's uh, very difficult to uninstall them. If you do a restore point before you do any virtual driver install, then you can back up uh, and get rid of them by just restoring the last restore point. So, but the what what they we recommend is that with especially Windows 7 64-bit or Windows 10, uh, plug the radio USB cable in, okay, turn on the radio, 
open your CPS, turn on the radio, and then let Windows find the driver, okay? And then if it fails to load a driver, then I would definitely get a hold of your dealer or, or post on one of the Facebook pages for some help. Okay, so let's take a look at the change log. Um, so right now, this is the firmware uh, that we're looking at, and it was the update 1.14, was dated 9-2-2019. Notice right at the top, it says that an SCT baseband update is required. This is the format that will be used when it's a got a little special updates. Um, similar will be if you have to do an icon update, it will tell you at the top of the change list here that an icon update is required. In this particular case, there's no icon update, but there is a baseband. So it's good to know that, okay? And then this is a list of the things that were changed in version 114. Uh, these are the known issues that were addressed. And in this case, there's 10 of them. I'm not gonna go through them, uh, but this is where you would find out, hey, what did this ba uh, uh, firmware update actually take care of in the radio? Now, if, you're, if you have older firmware and you're updating, let's say you're at 12 and you're gonna update to 14, it's going to include whatever was changed in 113 or the previous firmware updates and you can read those as well. But that's the change log, and that is the number one thing that I do when I get a firmware update, is I take a look and see what's, what is it addressing. Of course, I'm doing a lot of testing, so I will use this actually as a test checklist to make sure that the changes that are documented here are actually working properly, okay? But you don't have to do that, you just need to know what is happening. So let's shut this down. Now, in addition to this change log, there's a lot of other stuff in here. The first thing I would look at is, because this is a firmware update, let's look at the instructions for firmware update, okay? And it'll tell you a bunch of stuff to do. Uh, you turn your radio on, you open up the CPS. Um, so if you're gonna do a firmware update, the number one thing that you do first is you run the new CPS programming software program before you do the update. And you also make sure you save your code plug. And, and then once you have those two things done, you would go ahead and set your COM port for the radio's uh, uh, COM port, um, connect the cable to the PC and radio. <clears throat> Actually, this would be number one, and this actual setting the COM port would be number two. You really have to have the radio on and connected. Uh, in, in the CPS open to actually see this COM port up there. Uh, it, a, a little bit of a warning here, always turn off GPS and APRS in the radio menu before uh, updating to prevent the radio to going to transmit when connected to the PC. It's gonna cause uh, CPU or memory IC damage uh, in the radio, or it could do it to the PC as well. So um, now typically what I would do is uh, program a null channel <clears throat> and, up and call it update and uh, turn the radio to update. Uh, or go ahead and turn off GPS and APRS uh, as well. Okay, so uh, in order to do the update, these are the instructions. I'm not going to continue going through these instructions, but you need to read through these. These are the buttons that you hold down to actually put the radio into firmware update mode. Um, and then this is how you go ahead and uh, do the update and the file to update, et cetera, et cetera. And what's very important is when you do a firmware update, number eight, you've got to do the MCU reboot because the firmware is really not loaded into the main computing unit until after you do a uh, reboot, uh, MCU reboot or reset. Okay, so that's uh, the instructions for firmware update. Again, I'm not gonna go into this too, too much. I just wanted to actually make you aware that the read first update instructions folder is the, is the important folder for understanding what you're gonna be doing when you do a firmware update. Now, in addition to it, there's a user manual, uh, and this is uh, called the JSON to CSF, uh, CSV conversion file. Um, I personally, when I download my uh, contact list, digital contact list from Radio ID Net, I like to use the JSON, it's faster, and this converts the JSON to the CSV file format so that you can actually import it in the radio. And these are the instructions for doing that. And it also includes uh, uh, in the firmware update uh, folders, there will be an update for the conversion uh, program. 
So let's shut that down. Let's go back up now to the main menu. So here we are. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do on this radio to get it prepared for firmware 114 is to do the baseband update. So we open that up. There'll be instructions on how to do the update. Okay, and then there'll be an, a flash update program. Be, uh, the hex file is the actual flash update. The setup sct underscore port msi is the actual program you run to do a baseband update and the instructions will tell you that okay so the one thing that's very important is if you've ever done a baseband update on any of the anytone radios before make sure you go in to your uh, control panel and your programs and uninstall and the old sct port msi do not try to use an older uh, S setup SCT port MSI um, uh, baseband update program. Uh, they're, they're, these things are very subtle changes, and uh, we've seen things where if someone uses an older version of the program that they may have had from uh, uh, the baseband's in the past, it's going to cause you problems. So always use the SCT setup SCT port MSI update program that comes with the firmware update. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, this would be the folder with the CPSs in there. So that would be the application you would run to do the firmware update. Um, the firmware update folders are here. Okay, uh, this one is 9.2, it's the SPI file. Uh, when you do a firmware update, you only see the SPI file on the update screen, but these two files are necessary as well. So you need to make sure you extract everything properly and and keep everything in the same folder when you're updating. Um, the N version uh, is something that came out uh, uh, the next day. There was some reason for this. Uh, and so it actually had its own. It's also dated newer. Uh, this is unusual. This is not usually uh, what happens. Usually you're only going to get one at a time. But sometimes uh, a last minute beta test will show that there, we need to update. And so they will pop this next uh, version in uh, as an add-on. Uh, typically don't like to do that. Now this folder here is uh, uh, done by uh, one of our beta testers, Tim Raut. And uh, he, he does, he's giving you a whole bunch of screens, uh, background screens that you can use. And there you can follow instructions on how to do that as well. Um, this is the conversion program I told you about. It's in a zip file, you have to extract it. And then this one is one that most people miss out on, and it's sad because Trig Visvar, uh, one of our beta testers and dealers out of the Midwest, has done a really outstanding program guide. It's it was originally started for the 868, and it carries over to the 878, and it actually applies very much to the 578 because these these radios are all very similar. So I'm going to just take a minute and open the guide up now. There's going to be uh, uh, different language versions. So depending upon, uh, first of all, there's a VFO programming guide if you want to learn how to program the VO, VFO mode. Uh, this happens to be, uh, I think, Italian, and then there's a, a, a German. Uh, no, sorry, this is Spanish. There's a German. Uh, there's an Italian, and then this is the English guide right here. I am going to show you this real quickly. You open it up, and it does have a uh, table of contents. So if you wanted to know about importing and exporting data, you'd go to page 25. Firmware updates, page 26. So this is a very comprehensive guide. Uh, TrigV spent a lot of time doing this. There's an introduction to the radio. Again, it's it's geared to the 868, 878, but it's fine for um, uh, doing uh, the 578 radio as well. It will really help you. Now there's an error here. Uh, my call sign is actually November 6 Delta mic radio. So if you're looking for my videos, you would actually, uh, uh, this would be a six, not a zero. Um, uh, and I apologize, I didn't, I, that's the first time I've actually seen that this uh, had this error because I'm not usually opening the program guide. I've pretty much gotten past that stage in, in my programming. But anyway, there's quite a bit of information. I'm not going to go through it all. Uh, but uh, if you have a question, this is the first place I would go uh, to try to teach yourself how to program these radios. Okay, so we'll go back up. 
essentially this is the uh, virtual com drivers and uh, as you can see if you open it up it says only if needed uh, i highly recommend that you get your dealer assistance before you try to load the virtual com drivers it's the dealer will know um, some of the nuances if if you can't get a hold of the dealer feel free to try to get a hold of me uh, qst uh, n6 dmr you can uh, send me an email through qst uh, or you can catch me on one of the Facebook pages or the Facebook Messenger. Um, this is the way you would get the firmware. It would either be in a zip or a RAR file. And if I open this, it's going to show you that, yeah, these are the folders that are going to be in there. And I've already extracted them here to uh, go over this with you. So when you download a uh, firmware, uh, this is what it's going to look like. And for, for, for uh, uh, just for kind of archive purposes, let's take a look at the next 115 official. Remember, now I put the baseband update in my folders because a lot of times people will ask me, hey, I, I want to go directly to 115. Do I need to do the baseband update from 114? The answer is yes. I don't need to send them all the 114 uh, firmware, I just send them 115 and I include the baseband update. That's why it's in here. Normally on 115, you would not see this. Again, A read first, change log, going down, and what was changed in version 115, there was some uh, audio drop, receive audio drop issues that were fixed. There was some improved beat Bluetooth transmit, a no audio issue that was really tough to nail down. And then um, the call sign, uh, uh, basically it's the destination call sign in the APRS section. Uh, this is a, a, a two call. Uh, it's something that uh, Bob Rowinga, uh, the APRS guru, uh, he publishes a table, uh, AP8081, uh, when that is uh, in your APRS uh, destination ID, it comes through in your packet. And anybody can look it up and they'll say, oh, it's an Anytone 878 radio that is sending this packet. Um, and the actual destination ID is really not uh, applicable. It's not, it's only a, a, a kind of like an English instruction. It's not part of the packet. Uh, it does, you, you don't need that. Um, you do need maybe just uh, something in there as a uh, place set, but uh, AP, ATA, uh, part AT81 is the 878, uh, APAT51 is the 578. And uh, so anyway, that's uh, uh, this is a, a, a down and dirty video, and I just wanted to show you kind of the format and what's available to you when you download a firmware update. And, and I would actually recommend to any new users when you first get your radio, even if it's got the latest firmware in it, I would still download the firmware update because of the valuable information that's in here, especially the update instructions and the programming guides. Okay, this is Dwayne, N6DMR. Um, good luck. Uh, hopefully this video is helpful and uh, I'm gonna do a little editing on it and uh, publish it on my uh, N6 uh, 